our heat stuff and today on this particular video I'm only going to be doing um, how to find Q from M C C P delta T the whole Q M cat formula um, any of the Hess law stuff or any of the other more um, I don't know thermochemistry ish stuff is going to be on the actual thermochemistry videos um, so just a quick introduction thermochemistry that's what it is um, and I want to kind of point out that temperature and kinetic energy are directly related. Um, temperature is actually a measurement of the kinetic energy of the particles in a sample. So as the kinetic energy goes up, so does the temperature. Or you could say vice versa. As the temperature goes up, the kinetic energy goes up. So heat <coughs> is a form of energy that can be transferred between samples because of differences in temperature. Or you could say because of differences in kinetic energy. And it's abbreviated with a Q, um, and it does move spontaneously from something that's considered to be hot to something that's considered to be cold. But you have to kind of think about what the words hot and cold mean. There isn't a definitive definition, like a quantitative definition for hot and cold, because the words hot and cold are used to compare two objects. You know, if you step outside and say, oh wow, it's hot out here, the air's not actually hot, it's just warmer than you. Um, you know, or if you touch an ice cream and say, wow, that's really cold, well, it is cold in comparison to you. So the terms hot and cold are used as comparisons, and it's always you're comparing two objects when you use those words. Because, you know, something that has a temperature of, like, negative 100 degrees Celsius could, consider, could be considered to be hot if you set it next to someone or something that was negative 200 degrees Celsius. Um, and the energy is transferred... Um, is measured in joules. It could be measured in calories, but you know, mostly in our class we use joules, so there you go. Um, and if you remember from what I said the other day, that you can't measure heat directly. You can only measure the transfer of heat. Because like when you take the temperature of something, you plop a thermometer into a solution or something like that, you're not actually measuring the heat of the solution. You're measuring the heat in the solution that was transferred to the thermometer and the thermometer has been calibrated in such a way that the temperature is a pretty accurate reflection of the heat that's in whatever it is that you're measuring. So this is a cute little picture I have of you know what exactly heat transfer is. If you have a an environment and you have a system in that environment the system will exchange heat with its surroundings. If the energy is flowing out of the system, then you're going to have a negative energy. And the other day, I told you guys about enthalpy and how this would be like an exothermic reaction, and you would have a negative delta H. Whereas if the energy is going into the system from the surroundings, that your, your um, energy is going to be positive because we define everything in terms of the system, not the surroundings. <coughs> Um, you can measure heat transfer also using a calorimeter. Um, this is a bomb calorimeter. I've never used one of these. I haven't the slightest clue how to use it. I think the reaction occurs in here and then the heat generated by this is like transferred to the container. This fits in here, by the way. Uh, but I've never used one of these and I like to use these. The good old fashioned styrofoam cup with a lid on it. And what happens is, in this particular reaction, what we are going to do in our lab for this is we're going to take a metal object and we're going to heat the bejesus out of it. And then we are going to insert it into here, and this cup will contain some water that we have measured the temperature of, so we know the starting temperature of it, and we're going to drop some metal in here, some really, 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 really hot metal, and see what it does to the temperature of our water, and then use that to figure out the starting temperature of the metal. <coughs> Sorry, my allergies are bothering me today. Um, just remember that the energy given off during a reaction, in this case, you know, we're going to put the metal in here, so the energy given off by the metal is going to be equal to, but opposite in sign, to the energy absorbed by the water. Basically, the Q, Q is heat, heat absorbed by the water is going to equal the heat released by whatever reaction we're dealing with, or like I said, in our case, by the metal. Now this metal that I'm referring to is the lab that we're going to do um, next, so you can look on the webpage and read through that lab if you are so inclined. <clears throat> I don't really feel like talking about that. Okay, specific heat. 
Specific heat, I put the definition down here. I probably should have put this up here, but you know, whatever. Specific heat is defined as the amount of energy required to raise the temperature of one gram of a substance by one degree Celsius, or you could say by one Kelvin, because a Kelvin is the same size as a degree Celsius. Um, and specific heat is one of those properties of a substance that you can actually use to identify an unknown substance. You know, just like you can use density, you can use melting point, boiling point, all of those numerical values to identify an unknown substance. You can uh, use specific heat in the same way. Uh, all you have to do if you, you know, had an unknown substance and you figured out its specific heat through experimentation, you could then go to the back of any chemistry book and look up a specific heat table and see which substance has the same specific heat. Uh, the amount of energy, Q, that's transferred during some kind of a temperature change, it depends on three things. It depends on the type of material, which will give you your specific heat. It depends on how much of that material you have. And it does depend on the size of the temperature change, or delta T. Remember, delta just means a change in. And so the formula to calculate heat, because remember, heat can't be measured directly, is going to be the mass of whatever object you're dealing with times the specific heat for the material that you're working with times the change in temperature. And I like to look at this and say, okay, Q equals M cat. If you look at it, you can kind of see that it's M and then there's the A and yeah, you got it. Um, so all I have left on this is just a couple of examples. Feel free to follow along with as many of these as you want or you can watch a couple of them and then turn this sucker off and move, go about your day. Uh, so we have here a four gram sample of glass heated from 274 to 314 Kelvin found to have absorbed 32 joules of energy. So whenever you have a problem like this, you know, the biggest thing is always well, where do I start? Well, look at your question. In this particular case, the question says find the specific heat. Um, and specific heat is the C sub P. And so here we can say, okay, I know I'm dealing with Q because I have 32 joules, which is in this case Q. I have a temperature change, so there's my delta T, and I have this mass right here. Well, <laughs> M has two humps, I don't know why, two, three. It's Friday, whatever. Um, and so you can see here we have a mass, we have a change in temperature, we have an amount of energy, and we're asked for a specific heat, which means we are using Q equals M cat. Oh, that's a delta T. Uh, since we are solving for C sub P, I'm going to rearrange this. And C subscript P, that's just the abbreviation for specific heat. Capacity, that's where the C comes from. Specific heat capacity, I have no idea where that P comes from. Uh, so specific heat is equal to Q M delta T. Plug in our numbers. Q is 32. Mass was 8. Delta T is 314 minus 274, or 40. And don't plug this into your calculator. You can do this on your own. These guys will reduce out. This becomes a, I'm sorry, I don't know why I wrote a f eight there. I should have wrote a four. My bad. Like I said, it's Friday. Uh, this becomes an eight, and this cancels out entirely. And so we end up with eight over 40, or one fifth, and in decimals, that's 0 0.20. Now, what are the units on this? Well, specific heat has the units of Q, M, and delta T. So Q was joules, mass is grams, delta T in this case was Kelvin. So the units are joules per gram Kelvin. Okay, next example, how much energy will the same glass sample gain when heated from 314 to 344? So same glass means that the mass is the same, the four grams, and it means that, that since the question's asking how much energy, remember energy in this case is Q, we're gonna use the C sub P that we just calculated, the 0 0.20 joules per gram Kelvin, and this right here is gonna be your delta T. So we are calculating for Q, which means we don't need to rearrange anything. So M, C, sub P, delta T. Plug in your numbers, we get M is four, times C sub P, which is 0 0.2, times delta T, 344 minus 314 is 30, 
And so this is going to be equal to these three numbers multiplied together. Again, don't use your calculator. Try doing this without the calculator. You get 4 times 30 is 120, times 0.2 gives you 24. And the units on Q are joules. Another example, if 200 grams of water at 20 degrees Celsius absorbs 41,840 joules of heat, what will its final temperature be? And then I give you the specific heat of water. So the question is asking for final temp. Well, final temp is a part of delta T. So here I have 200 grams, which is mass. This is my TI, my initial temperature. I'm looking for final temperature, but I'm going to go ahead and leave my delta T as my unknown. And then my 41,840 joules, well, that's Q. And so I have Q equals MCP delta T. Well, I'm rearranging for delta T. So delta T is going to be equal to Q over MC sub P. So Q is 41,840 divided by our mass, which is 200 times our specific heat, which is 4.184 equals. You can reduce this out without using a calculator. The 41,840 and the 4.184, they'll reduce down. This becomes a 1. This becomes 10,000. Then you can cross out zeros. You've got two zeros there, two zeros there. So this just simply becomes 100 divided by 2, or 50 degrees Celsius. Now this is delta T. The question asked, what's the final temperature? Well, delta T is equal to, whoa, I left off my T, is equal to the final temperature minus the initial temperature. So if delta T was 50, T final is what we're trying to find, minus 20, because TI was 20. So that means the final temperature is 70 degrees, whoa, Celsius. I'll just skip forward because I think I got a lot of work showing on here. Okay, one last example, and then we will call this one a day. Aluminum has a specific heat of 0.9 joules per gram degree Celsius. How much energy, so right there we're looking for Q, is needed to raise the temperature of a 635 gram block from 30.7 to 82.1. So we're finding Q, Q equals MC sub P delta T. Mass is 635, C sub P is 0.9, delta T is 82.1 minus 30.7 or 51.4. Multiply all these guys together and you get 29,000 something. I don't remember exactly what it is, so let me plug it in. 635 times. 0.9 times 51.4. I would not expect you to do this kind of math in your head. 29,375. We're allowed three sig figs, so we can just say 29,400. That's a lot. Question asked us for our answer in kilojoules, but this answer is just in joules, and the reason it's just in joules is because of this right here. So to convert this into kilojoules, you just go one, two, three, final answer, 29.4 kilojoules. Um, if you have any questions, just send me a little message, email, whatever. Um, otherwise, see you later.